Hi again and thank you for joining me for another video. I'm so excited to bring you an interview I did with Nick Stauskas, currently playing with the Portland Trailblazers, aka Sauce Castillo. And we discuss everything from how to goal set, because who better to ask than somebody who's gotten himself all the way to the NBA, what he does to keep himself in peak physical, mental, and emotional condition, and what are his support systems when he's not feeling 100%. Anyway, we discussed all of this and really went into his life motto, which is when you master your mind, you master your life. And he has certainly done that. Anyway, stay tuned for the interview. You don't want to miss this one. Today we are joined with Nick Stoskas from the 76ers. Really excited about that. Thank you for joining today. Oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> what do you personally need to stay in peak physical condition? One thing that I, I believe it starts with is, is what you put in your body. So, yeah. uh, especially when I'm in more of like a training phase or um, I'm in the middle of like playing a lot of games. I'm very aware of like what foods I'm eating and what I'm drinking. So uh, I try to only to mainly have water, like just because I know, um, you know, I, I'm losing a lot of sweat. I'm losing a lot of water when I'm working. So I always try to rehydrate, um, and then I always try to eat pretty healthy in terms of like having chicken, uh, some kind of chicken or fish, salad or vegetables, because um, I feel like when I eat those when I eat those things, I actually feel better. You know, you don't have that like heavy feeling after you're done eating. Um, and then it allows me to, to perform and move the way I need to move on the floor. Um, and then to go along with that also, I think being active is, is a key part of, of feeling healthy and looking healthy. I completely agree. Right. couldn't agree with you more. Um, you can definitely feel when you uh, eat something that doesn't work well with you. Ooh. You know, sometimes it really does affect how you feel physically yeah. and yeah, your performance. Yeah. So, perfect. What have you been doing to improve yourself and your game, physically and mentally? I've started taking Pilates classes oh, um, six times it. a week. Yeah, and it's been it's been really enjoyable. At first, it wasn't something that I enjoyed doing. It um, I kind of I was just doing it because people told me that it would be good for me, uh, which it is. It, it is really good for me. But as I started to do it, I I started to fall in love with it because. Um, it almost became like a, a hobby outside of basketball, like something that I, like part of my routine every day. So I'd go to my class for an hour and for that hour of Pilates, like, yes, I'm doing workouts and I'm working on my body, but it was almost like a chance to escape mentally. We're like, yeah. for this one hour, I'm not worried about anything. I'm just going to focus on like my breath and like my body. And, um, there's a lot of times where you can feel, especially in Pilates, where using your breath, you're allowed, you're like, you're able to, you know, hold the position that much longer, or you're able to go deeper into a stretch because of, uh, of your breath and, and how you're using it. And so when I started realizing those things, like how a uh, simple breath can affect the way your body's moving, like I was like, whoa, that's <laughs> like, this is new to me because I never, I never knew that before. So yeah. um, I think that helps me me mentally and physically just having that, um, just having that sense of calmness all the time and that steady breath, I don't know, it feels like it relaxes me almost and keeps me in a, in a steady place. So I feel like Pilates has helped me mentally and physically this off season and uh, I think I'm in a good place now. That's, that's fabulous. I think that Pilates, yoga, any kind yeah. of um, physical movement plus the mental aspect to it can really help and yeah. um, I'm glad to hear that it's, it's working so well for you. It's fun. I've loved Pilates for years. It's, so. a, it's a good exercise. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Have you ever felt like quitting? And if so, can you tell me about a time or about that time and how you overcame it? Yeah, there was really, there was really only one time in my life where I really considered quitting basketball and it was like, it was a life, it was a life changing moment. And, uh, I was, I was 15 years old and I was my, it was my first year of prep school away from home. I was in Connecticut. So like my first couple of weeks being away from like my family and friends and I was really homesick and um, I just remember being like really stressed out 
because I, I was missing everyone and then at the same time I was getting a lot of homework and then still having to go to like basketball practices and all that and it was all just very new to me and there was one day where I just like I broke down crying and I called home to my parents and I was like I'm done like that's it I'm coming home like this isn't for me uh, like this was a huge mistake and um, they were they were the ones who just reminded me like how much I loved it and like I was they didn't push me to go to prep school like I was the one who said I wanted to go because I wanted to I wanted to get a you know NCAA scholarships and then eventually play professional basketball and I knew that this was the way that I had to do it and so it was just one of those moments in your life where like you have to make a decision like am I gonna just like scrap all the work that I've done this like for the last like 10 years or am I gonna keep going and and see what happens and at that moment like at that moment when I when I was like crying and I was like really hurt I just like this, I decided in my mind I was like I'm already uncomfortable I'm already like in pain whatever like I might as well get a reward out of it you know what I mean like yeah. why would I go through the pain and then like quit like my, I might as well get something out of it so I'm glad I stuck with it and uh, eventually it, I after persevering it it ended up working out so it really did so I'm happy I stuck with it and my parents were definitely the ones who like talked me back into it because I was. It was just, it was so much for me at one point and I was like, I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't do it and they reassured me like, you got this, you can do it, so. And you did. Good to have my parents uh, on my side. Definitely, they supported you through the whole process. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even putting in basketball court. Even put, that, was the, that was like the first <laughs> the step. Backyard. That was like the first step of all of this, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, your passion. So would you say that's how you stay motivated? Just thinking about the end game, your end goal? And what you want to achieve? Yeah, I think so. But I also think it's um, what I've done or what I've thought is um, helpful is breaking it down into like smaller things. So I always have the end goal in hand, like at mine, and I'm always thinking about that because it keeps me keeps me motivated. But a lot of time when I felt like when I look at the like the big picture and look at the end goal, it sometimes it seems like too big of a mountain to climb. Like I feel like I'm so far away, and then it becomes a little bit stressful. Yeah. I've learned to try to make my goals a little bit smaller and knock those goals out one by one to get to like the end goal. And I feel like that way it it's a little bit more manageable, and um, you don't have to wait so long to like get that final goal. Um, you know, because yeah. for me sometimes my goals are is something I can achieve every day. You know, and it doesn't have to be like, oh, I have to wait two, three years to achieve this goal. It's like, no, I can achieve this one goal today, and by achieving this goal, I'm going to be one step closer to the finish line. So, that's a um, that's a mindset that I've like adopted over my career, and I felt it's helpful. Yeah, definitely. So, no matter what, you have to set goals in order to get to wherever you're yeah. going. Well, because if you're not setting goals, then you're just I feel like you're just running around aimlessly. Whatever you're doing, whether you're you're trying to become like a, a lawyer or a doctor or whatever it is, if you don't have the end goal, you're just you're 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 doing what you're doing without purpose. So um, I always feel like it's important to have the purpose and a sense of direction um, so you can stay focused. Yeah, I can't agree more. And uh, it's true. Some goals that we set out for ourselves are so massive mm -hmm. that it, it seems insurmountable. Yeah. That if you don't break it down, yeah. it's just a lot of people will give up. Yeah. You know? When it's, it's tough because some of those goals take, like I said, years to achieve. And if that's your only goal, sometimes, you know, two years in, you're like, oh my God, this is taking forever. I can't, yeah. I can't. And then you start doubting yourself and you tell yourself, oh, there's still so much more time. Like that's when you start playing mind games with yourself and then you get into your own head and you start thinking about quitting and whatnot. So, yeah. um, I feel like when you keep, when day by day, you keep like knocking off these goals and you keep achieving your goals day by day, it's almost like positive reinforcement because then you, you keep doing the right things. Like you, you know you're on track, you know you're doing the right thing. So you're like, eventually this is going to work out. So I feel like that's helpful. Definitely. Fabulous. Thank you. It's good stuff. <laughs> I think so. Um, okay, and one of the last things is, what is the biggest thing that you've learned about being in the MBA? Like about yourself? Mm. I've learned, I've learned a lot, just especially because I think the MBA gives you a lot of time to reflect. Like we're, we're very busy in terms of, 
you know, we're always on the move to a different city. Yeah. Um, but the reality of the reality is that you can only play basketball for a certain amount of hours every day. So like the same, oh, um, you know, a normal person will work a nine to five. Like as basketball players, we can't like we can't play basketball from nine to five. It just that our bodies won't hold up. So yeah. we actually do have a, like a lot of time throughout the day to, to like to ourselves, whether we're traveling in a plane or we're in a hotel room in a different city. And so you get a lot of time to yourself just to think. And sometimes it's not a good thing to just be in your own head that much. Yeah. Um, so I've learned, I think one thing that I've learned is that I, I, I've always thought that I enjoy being by myself. Like my whole life, because I've been away from my family um, and I've like had to go to prep school, I've had to learn to like be without my friends and family. I actually thought that I enjoy being by myself, but I've realized that over the course of my three-year career so far, like the hotel rooms and like the planes, and, like it's actually not healthy for me to be by myself that much because I start getting in my own head. Yeah. And like when I have too much time, I start overthinking every aspect of basketball and like my relationships and like what's going on with my family and everything. And so... I think the main thing I've learned is like it's important to have other things outside of basketball. Like, it's important to have mm -hmm. other relationships and other hobbies and other things to do to take your mind off basketball because especially in the NBA like when it's your job and let's say it's not going as well as you would want, you're going to drive yourself crazy if that's the only thing that's going through your mind all day. And like I said, if it's not going well and it's the only thing that's going through your mind, those are all negative like thoughts and negative reinforcements. Exactly. And eventually you can, you can wind up in like a dark place where you're just like in a bad mood and you're always thinking negatively and it's happened to me before and I've had to catch myself. So I think that's the one thing I've learned about, you know, this time in the NBA is just, um, you need to be able to take your mind off different things and relax because, um, it's, it's key to success. Like if you're not relaxed, if you're not able to get away from it, yeah. then, um, yeah, it's, it can be tricky. Sometimes you can end up overthinking it. So what do you do to get yourself out of that dark place or get yourself away from those negative thoughts? Like, what well, do you do to distract yourself? I think um, one of the most helpful things that I've had uh, since I've played for the Sixers is like having someone on the team who you consider like a really good friend. Just having someone who's who's there and understands the situation to tell you that like you're okay. Yeah. Sometimes that's all you need is just like a friend to be like just to, to talk to someone and um, so yeah, that's I think that's that's probably been the most helpful thing is just you know having good friends and good people to, to talk to and you know whether it's going out to dinner or go seeing a movie or whatever it is like that's that's what we enjoy doing. That's that's great. Like you need to have some sort of outlet, yeah. and I think that's that's true. Like you can have your passion, but yeah. it's good to have something else and a good support system to bounce things off of because we can get stuck in those places. For and sure. um, if you don't have something to get you out of it, yeah. it could be a problem yeah. for a lot of people. I agree. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to uh, do this interview for us. Um, I, I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. It was fun. They were really good questions. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Thoughtful. <laughs> I try. Well, I really want this website to be about overall wellness and health. So not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. So. I know that that's a huge part of any physical success. Mm -hmm. So especially with anybody who's a professional um, in pro professional sports, they need to have the mental and emotional mm -hmm. uh, stability, you know, to continue on because it's very trying. Yeah, you need to be able. To, uh, my dad always says, like, never get too high, never get too low. Like that's that's the main thing. You can have great days and you can have bad days, but it's just important to never you know, overreact to those days, always kind of just stay level and uh, always, that'll always lead to you being a little bit more happy and a little bit more, you know, mentally stable, so. Yeah, well, it was great advice. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much again and uh, we wish you every success with you. your future um, and future goals. I know they're high, I'm sure. Yeah. And um, yeah, I hope you check out the next video that I post. Have a great day. Bye. Bye, guys.
So there's the interview. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed putting it together for you. Nick just went into so much different detail about all the things that really help and support him. And I hope that you find that they do the same for you. Anyway, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And um, if you have any comments, please leave them below. Like always, share if you found this interesting. And like always, subscribe. Anyway, until I see you next, be well. Talk to you soon. Bye.